Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new episode of Hot Mike. We've got an incredible episode for you today. You know, we're coming off hot off the heels, basically, of Stage 1 playoffs, now heading into CWL Seattle, and we've got a real treat for you. I've got the entire FaZe Clan roster. They're coming off a huge victory at the Stage 1 playoffs. They battled for f their share of $500,000, and now they're here with me. They need no introduction, but we're going to do it anyways. I'm going to kick it off with a Tatch. Pal, you're here on Hot Mike for back-to-back -back weeks. First off, thank you. Feels good. I mean, it's a good reason to come back. You know, win a tournament, get back on Hot Mike, I'm, it's, I'm feeling yeah. good. Yeah, I was a good luck charm for yes, your, you your were. victory. Yes, you, you came were. over to my apartment for six hours and did laundry because you were in the hotel. <laughs> I'll be there that. every time we go to Columbus. I so. need a, a check cut my way from the prize winnings as well. <laughs> now, uh, congrats again, but we'll keep on moving along the line here. The Italian Stallion, Zuma, you're up next. How you feeling, buddy? Feeling pretty good. How you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm excited yeah. for another uh, open event. How you guys, you know, there was obviously a big change to the game between the playoff run now coming into Seattle. How are you guys feeling warming up in here? Good. I actually love the new update. I think it fits us. To be honest, a lot of people say Airborne is, um, you know, taking out is going to hurt us, but I think it's going to fit us a lot. Well, I'm excited to see how it all plays out for you. It's going to be uh, incredible to watch as we've got a lot of teams here battling for the 200 grand. Next up, Priesta. Buddy, it's your first hot mic. I'm excited to have you on the show. Uh, you're coming off of your first grand final. It was a victory. So how are you doing? I'm feeling good. I'm glad I can get the victory, and I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks, thanks, man. And there was a you were you were criticized a little bit coming out of this roster. I mean, the whole phase of organization was when you first came on. How's it feel now for you looking back at me and like, yeah, we got the win. It feels good. I mean, it's got proving to, people right? wrong definitely feels good. So. Well, thanks for coming on, man. I'm excited to have you here and uh, a veteran on the hot mic and a, obviously a veteran of the game as well. We've had what player, world champ, coach, manager, player again, replaced. Thanks for coming on, buddy. Thank you. Thank you for having me, man. How are you doing? Are you feeling good about the squad coming in? Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling great. I think we've been playing well. All right. Well, I'm excited to see what you guys are able to do, but let's move on with the show. We're going to get into our first segment, which is the CWL debrief. We're, we're going to be talking about playoffs, uh, kind of teams throughout their performances, but also obviously that epic 10-game grand final we had between FaZe and Optic. But I do want to kick it off with an incredible clip. This is the TCL clip of the week. It's a tatch. Right next to me, he has an incredible 1v3 in a round 11 in game two of the ground final. We're going to watch the clip and then also, you know, we're going we're to talk over the casting and sort of hear this from your guys' POV. First thing I want to hear is attach. How do how, how you instantly decide to storm on through? Well, I said the F word, then it. <laughs> F it. And then I went through it. And then I saw Crimson right there. I saw him right there when I did you a little did. We weren't up. sure. Yes. We thought you no. might have spotted I saw him. him right there. You see him again. And then yeah, I we saw thought him. we saw him again. I too. saw him. I right kind of saw him. Like, I thought I saw someone. I'm like, wait, did I see him go down there? I literally said that. Did I see him? And then we all. But then like, well, they didn't want to say anything because like they didn't want to mess me up. Yeah. Well, what's that like for you guys in that situation where you have a round 11 and a 1v1 and the three teammates are watching? Like, what's that like for you guys? I knew he was winning. Uh, it. Once, he, once yeah. he was right here, I knew this was over. Yeah. Once I was shimming like this, I knew I was going to win that. His 1v1s are just too nasty. Yeah. You know, you've been called one of the better, uh, you know, 1v1 players in the game. You've obviously put a lot of time into search and destroy. What do you think it is? I'm just curious about you as a person and player that makes you solid in situations like that. Well, I mean, it's really just like getting comfortable in those situations, playing a lot of it, playing a lot of like S and D tournaments, whether it's 4v4s, 2v2s, 1v1s, wagers, or something. Just practice repetition and finding out and like knowing where they're going to be, and kind of ha setting the timing in your head to know where they could have got, where they could be when you're in that 1v1. Well, you got the win, and uh, that was a big part of yeah. obviously. I, the series went on forever. It was like I, I felt like I casted for four or five hours, but uh, <laughs> was that was a big part of obviously getting that first series. But we're going to talk more through some of the crazy moments from it. But I do just want to do an overall breakdown. So let's pull up if we can a graphic here of uh, you know the top eight teams that competed for that five hundred thousand prize pool uh, just what a week and a half ago for the stage one playoff and. We're just going to target a couple teams, kind of talk about performances, whether uh, you know they were disappointed, what you guys saw from them. But there you go. On your screens, you see the Pro League Stage 1 results. Phase at the top, followed by Optic Gaming, Luminosity, Team Caliber, Red Reserve, E United, Rise Nation, and finally Envy. I, I do want to ask real quick, we're going to talk about the top four teams mostly, but for the bottom four, Rise Nation was obviously a shock, I think, for yeah. everybody. But did anything else really surprise you? Um, I would, really? just, I would say, yeah, not really, but red potentially because they have made those runs before at Atlanta. They started off in like top 16 and they made it all the way to the grand finals. So they can make those runs. So I was a little surprised. Uh, and then also their match was LG. They got reverse swept their first round. So yeah, that's true. I was okay. expecting them to go a little bit further. I, I think. Well, replays to you. I'm curious. Uh, you know, you've been around a long time. Obviously, you've seen a lot of upsets. You've seen a lot of chokes. Uh, 
what were your thoughts kind of on Rise Nation, the fact that they did fall a little bit short of that particular tournament? Um, I mean, I think they, the only reason they fell short is because of themselves. I mean, they're, they're still a good team even with this new roster. I just uh, I think there are some behind-the-scenes things that were going on, and it was making them play not to their full potential, all four of them, not just one player. Well, so It's more obvious now when you yeah. look back at, after a change happened, right? We're going to get into roster mania later in the show, but we'll continue to talk a little bit about uh, the playoffs. TK, they get fourth place, this Team Caliber roster that was trying to get back to their form. Um, I guess, Zuma, for you overall, what did you think about the fourth place finish? Did you think they had potential to really push past that, or did you expect yeah, kind no, of a roster change? I think right now it's just the competition is crazy. Like, I was looking at the top eight and just seeing Envy at the bottom, Rise at the bottom. I was like, it's crazy to see those teams <laughs> at the bottom because there's just, like, so many good teams. So I definitely could see TK making a run here. Well, we'll see. We'll, and again, we'll, we'll touch on the new roster and see what they're able to do. Is a, it, it, just about everybody made changes outside of a couple of the top teams. Uh, Priesta, obviously you guys end up matching up against Optic in the grand final, one of the greatest grand finals, I think, in Call of Duty history. I and mean, it's up there. It goes the distance. When you guys came into the event, let's say you were thinking in your heads, hey, guys, we're going to make a push to the final. Was that the team you expected to be there? Uh, yes and no. I mean, every team can make it to finals. Um, and then going against them in finals, I was actually pretty excited because I think that was my first time actually beating them. And I'm like 0-4 before this yeah. tournament. So it's like I've <laughs> always wanted to beat them, so it definitely felt good to play them, and especially in finals. Well, and that's uh, – I, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about winning it. I heard this crazy stat the other day. You know, FaZe comes in, they get first place. You guys have yet to win a winner's bracket match this year. Is that correct? Yes. We're 0 yeah. 3. What in the hell? Well, 0 3, but two of the games, we lost game five round 11. Yeah. So if we win one more round, we're top 62 events. Who knows what happens after? Like, maybe we get top three, maybe go to grand finals and win. But, like, you just got to win those first round of winners. That's the most important match. I, I can't imagine that's, like, a, a stat that's ever existed. Like, yeah, like a it's team definitely not. Stressful. <laughs> you're 2-0 and in series in the grand final and, what, 0-3 in winner's yeah. bracket matches. It's kind of demoralizing. Oh, winner's bracket round one. <laughs> winner's bracket round one. Wrong. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> get me started. And that's the worst round to lose, too. Yeah, because like, oh, that, yeah, that top six or the top 12 top six jump is so huge. Yeah. You need to win those. Well, you guys are obviously able to get it done as we're showing some highlights here from this. So, you know, the, the two players that were really a part. So the last time that Optic Gaming was taken in two best of, well, it was best of sevens back then, right? We're going yeah. all the way back to Advanced Warfare. Season three playoffs. Season three playoffs. And that was you guys as well. Attach yeah. and Zuma. What is it? I don't know. What's it like? Like, how, how do you even pull that off? It rarely ever happens, especially when it goes the distance like that to 10 games. Is it it's something magical about this 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 pairing this duo that gets it done? I don't know what it is. I don't know. I don't. I have no idea. Honestly, like when we just go into the finals, I just try to have fun. Like I try to think about it. Like I don't try and think like oh we got to win two series. I just go into it, you know, having fun. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, all the maps you play, you've played thousands of the times. It's like this one's just for a lot more money. So just win this game, and you're gonna make a lot of money well, and get a trophy. Yeah, so I wasn't even thinking about the money too. Like when we won, I was like, whoa, like we just made some good cash. Well, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, your guys' demeanor during games and comms because you guys have tweeted about it a little bit. We've got some <laughs> funny clips of you guys as well. But I do want to take a look at another amazing clip uh, replays. This was your one v three, which was just flawless. Let's let's run the clip with this, like. and I want you to kind of. Talk me through your thought process when this was going down because it was uh, it was absolutely a thing of beauty. If we could roll uh, roll replays as one v three here and check it out because that was like yours was a this might be a, a crazy moment. Yeah, yours was just methodical, man. It was awesome. Yeah, I mean, I just when, when I was in this, I mean, I just knew like right there, I, I knew one of them was going to be in the window. It's the most common spot. I just ended up hitting the nice shots. And then I didn't know if I saw him cross there, so I, I was like kind of onto it. But I, I knew the way like most people play it, they like to do exactly what they're doing here. He's just gonna watch the cross, and the other one's gonna shimmy the window. So I, I kind of just read the situation. It was a pretty easy read. And then right here, I saw Karma run into that window. Tommy started saying like, "Play fast, play fast. You have to challenge this guy." And then I just won a gunfight. I mean, that was, that was well. We also sure. thought he's gonna go to the other side of docks. Yeah. I think it was Tommy that said, "Yo, go top middle and like watch the other side." Yeah. yeah. He just, but he went straight for the challenge. And then Chris just started yawning. Chris and then he started yawning. <laughs> yeah. Slouches down in the chair. You just fry him in the window. But that was a huge moment because you get, well, one, it, well, you guys were down, what, 1-5. Yeah, that, yeah. that was your second round victory. Yes. And you get fully streaked out. Yeah. Did that completely, like, did that round completely shift, I guess, the yeah. the attitude kind of in the game? Like, hey, we can come back. As soon as we won that round, Preston me, was like, yeah. we're coming back. We're winning yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, once he said he was back. posted, or did you have streaks? Yeah, he got streaks. After he got streaks, I was like, yo, we got this. Let's go. Yeah. And then I got hyped. Yeah. Yeah. Except for Chris, he started yawning. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a look at that later in the show for sure. <laughs>
Uh, but I do want to take a look at another clip from this because uh, I, I almost lost my voice in the first two maps of this series. So we showed the search and destroy, and now I want to roll a clip where you guys are basically down. I can't remember if it was like 70 or 80 points in the first hard point. It's London Docks. It doesn't look pretty. You guys were getting beat up throughout most of the game. This is, I believe, this is the game five. Okay, so we're actually rolling the clip. This is this is your victory map, isn't it? Yeah, yeah this yeah, is yeah, the round we won. This yeah, is the round we won. So we'll take a we'll take a look at the winning moment first. What was what was going through the heads right now when you guys well, were about to seal the deal? Honestly, when it was a two v three, I knew that we had won just because when you get bombed out of Arnis Forest, especially at the B site and you have numbers, it's very difficult to not win that. So at this point, I kind of knew we won, and I knew yeah. we knew where the other two people were. So we just had to play a basic setup, and we knew we were gonna take yeah, it right there. Even if Preston died there, I was still yeah. confident yeah. of you clutching that before yeah. you were yeah. in the bomb. Yeah. And right well, before, well, they I knew Preston wasn't gonna die because I made formal completely one yeah. shot, and yeah. Preston literally hit fired him with one bullet and killed yeah. him. I was like, all right. And when Preston got the kill, it was like. Like, that's game. Yeah. Well, we uh, we got the clips a little bit out of order. We show the celebration first, but I still want to talk about the hard point because you actually replays brought up a crazy moment to me from that, which we can highlight when we go through it. Can we? Well, we saw the winning moment. Can we take a look now at the actual hard point comeback? Because this is what kind of started it all, right? This yeah. is this is game one. You guys are really struggling. We're gonna get to the you know closing moments of this one, where we can really check out where the comeback begins. But what replays? Kind of talk me through before we see it. Actually, one of the one of the moments you were telling me about with the fighter pilot, because I thought that was cool, and I, I didn't notice it. Yeah, no. Towards the end, when I got the streaks, like the like kind of mount to come back, I got the two piece pistol in the back. I got the streaks. I called the bomb in, and then I ended up calling the fighter pilot in like right away to like stall some time. And I uh, I team killed Zuma as well on purpose to make sure he spawns back beer because I killed the people going Water Street, and I only saw like two. And I was like, the other two have to be going around the back. And then I killed Tommy, so he spawned back left ramp, which is way it would that takes like 10 seconds off the time to get him back there to, to watch the back. And how, cru how crucial was that? How crucial was that in winning the map? I mean, that could that could have been the, the like, big moment. Granted, there yeah. were probably a lot of big moments throughout the course yeah. of a comeback like yeah. that. I imagine. Unbelievable stuff. Thousand IQ. And well, I mean, between the one v three he had in game two and the comeback he had there, just uh, just truly phenomenal. And that was, a, I mean, it was a pleasure to catch him. Sure, sure, it was a pleasure for viewers at home as well. <laughs> but let's uh, let's kind of, well, I want to touch on one last thing, I guess, with this. Just first off, what what, what did it feel like, kind of right when you won? I want to touch on that after we showed the clip. And sorry, I had a little bit out of order, but. Was it a big sigh of relief? Was it purely celebratory? Like, because, you know, we talked about the thousand days with you. It was like approaching kind of an Anaheim. Yeah, now, yeah. now Clayster's the one in that boat. But, uh, <laughs> and Ian. We talked about it a little bit. I guess, what was the overall kind of feeling? Was it purely just joy or was it like, Whew. it was like, yeah. like thank God <laughs> yeah. we finally won. And thank God that day was over because that was a very long day. A lot oh, of matches. And the thing is, at this tournament, I'm pretty sure out of seven games, we went game five five times. So it's kind of like none of the matches we, besides the TK when we 3 0 them. That was like the only match that wasn't that close. But even in that game, we had a close uh, CTF game. But it was just like a side release, like, thank God the day is over. Thank God we won. Thank God we finally proved everyone wrong. And it felt really good. Yeah, it felt good. I looked over when we won, and Dylan was gone. He was on the other side <laughs> of the stage. I was like, what's going on? I just wanted to get out of there. Yeah. Eat food. Honestly, I, that's how I felt like when Joe and I were there. Joe and I, you know, we'll be talking kind of off camera during breaks or. And I was just like, this this series needs to end. <laughs> just, I'm running out of gas. I mean, between that and the Birmingham one was long as hell oh, too, yeah, with that yeah. crowd. Like, my voice was feeling shot by the end, but it was uh, it was truly a special moment. Yeah. But now, I do want to transition into one of the the biggest talking points leading into this weekend, and that's going to be roster mania. You know, changes went down. Uh, there there were rumors about just about every team possibly making a change. We didn't know what the hell was happening. Like, I heard rumors with, with you guys, with Opti, like, just before before playoffs ended, like every team that seemed to be some sort of stigma, some sort of rumor about a potential change. Let's sort of start where it all kind of began. So obviously Slasher leaves Envy, uh, what? About 30 seconds after his match. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he ends up heading to Rise. Uh, I want to hear from you, uh, you all about it. Priest, we can start with you. Overall, just kind of thoughts on this trans uh, transition. Maybe one from Slasher's eyes leaving Envy and then also for the Rise team. Yeah, so I kind of known Slasher's always like wanted to leave that team. Uh, and then him going onto this team, I don't know how I feel about it because Methods and Slasher are like, two completely different players like slasher like is known for getting like a lot of kills and i feel like methods is like more of a slower ar compared to slasher uh but it could work out for them yeah I mean, that, that, well that's kind of how i feel about most of these changes like yeah. it, it could work out for yeah them. exactly I, I don't know exactly what to expect uh any anything additional you guys have for that like for that change in general or do you all kind of feel the same way like we're gonna have to wait and see there's a lot of personalities on the team with Slasher, yeah, Looney, I know Pierce can lose his mind sometimes. Like, I don't know, like, if they're going to keep their cool. But if they do, they're going to be, a, like, an amazing team. I think they just have so much talent that they're, they're going to be tough to beat. I yeah. mean, I, I think a lot of that team relies on TJ. I, yeah. I, I, I know they got rid of Methods. They picked up Slasher, and all eyes are on Slasher if he does well or not or whatever. But 
I mean, I, I feel like a lot of that team relies on how well TJ was playing. I think we're all forgetting about when well, Rise was on that, on that streak of being untouchable, how good TJ was. Well, TJ was, was the best player in the game at that point. He was having like 100 interactions a map. Yeah, yeah. And, and he was winning he was, every gunfight. Yeah. Like, I, I think a lot of people are forgetting about that. And I think if he shows up and starts playing like that again, I think no matter what player is on the team, Rise is going to be one of the best. Interesting. Yeah. Well, we'll see if they can do that this weekend. But we've got a lot of changes to get through. So we're going we're gonna to go one by one. Uh, next up. It's Chino and Theory. They get dropped from TK. Uh, that happens kind of shortly after it. And then you end up having Methods and Pharaoh that come in on the Team Caliber roster. So I guess I just want to kind of overall hear about, first off, what do you th did you think TK had to make a change? Attach, start with you. Oh, uh, yeah. I think t we, we all thought TK was going to make a change because Theory was always, I guess, considered the weaker link on the team, just not really keeping up with uh, everyone else. So I think it was pretty expected to make a, t a change. Well, we'll first talk about, I guess, Chino and Decimate kind of joining Envy, but I actually can we can we actually show the graphic? I want to show the one for the team caliber change. So this is when uh, Chino and Theory leave. We have Methods and Pharaoh that come in. So what do you guys think about the new team caliber roster? Like, I overall, think they're good. Probably. I think they definitely got a lot more like actual Fair raw right. talent and skill. Uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how they mesh because I feel like Chino was a good match with uh, Kenny and Accuracy on that team. Uh, but I think they just thought Methods is overall better player, so they're going to go with him. And then they brought in a kind of a newer player, Ferocities, who's a very good search and destroy player, has a lot of well, skill. Do you but, see uh, this as sort of a position maybe like when Priest joined? Like there was some doubt from yeah. maybe the community. There wasn't a lot you had proved yet. I, I think you could say the same for Pharaoh. Like we've seen yeah. glimpses. But is it sort of a similar situation? Yeah, you're definitely. Yeah, taking a gamble, sure. kind of? Yeah, yeah for I think sure. so. Because potentially, Pharaoh could become one of the best players in the game. He has a talent, good to search. But potentially, he's not as good as people may think. And then you never know what's going to happen. It all depends. I well, think it's depends. his mentality, to be honest. If he if yeah. he's willing to learn and, and play the game and grind, he's going to be really good. He yeah. just has too much talent. Well, that that actually, that comment wants kind of transitions me into the, the team change I want to show next. I know we showed it for a moment, but Chino and Decimate then going to Envy, because that's one thing I've heard about Decimate a lot. From the Search and Destroy players, like he's been a guy that seems really willing to learn. Uh, replays, I see you nodding your head. Is that is that kind of true for a player like him? Or Yeah, I'm a big fan of JT. Okay. Uh, I'm a big fan of Decimate. I like this new Envy roster a lot. I think uh, I talk to Classic a lot. One of my best friends, I've grown up with him, and he was talking about the roster changes, and I was a big fan of him picking up Decimate, so I'm happy they did it. And the other part of that is Chino. Now, yeah. I, I guess the, the big question here to you guys is like who, okay, maybe Slasher isn't the best leader, but he's a leader. Like there was no question on that MVP team he was the leader. Who do you guys think is going to be that guy now? I think the biggest voice will probably have to be Classic. I think this is going to be his time to really step up to the team and okay. or just try and like lead the team. I know he's been a little bit quiet before in his career, but I think him and Chino will be like the two leaders of this team. Well, I know replays you and Classic go way, way back. You guys yeah. basically came into did he can did he get you into Cold yeah. or You got him into yeah. it. Or, okay, I, I brought. Uh, he was basically playing pubs, and I just threw him on phase. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah Chris, but, uh, Chris just picks anyone and everyone. Well, on. do you yeah. think you know you've known him a long time? Do you think he has? Has, uh, that potential to be the leader this team needs. I mean, yeah, he, he did it last year with LG. He wasn't like some vocal leader, like outspoken guy. But when he was on that LG team, like he, he had a lot of say, like in their scrims and stuff. Like I talked to him all the time, and I've, he's always in the team speaking stuff. So I, I know he's he's a very smart player. People just don't talk a lot about him because he doesn't talk much himself. But he's he knows what he's doing. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we'll see if he's able to do it. And then uh, I, I think I agree with you. I think Chino will be a piece of that as yeah. well. Yeah. I think Chino's a very underrated player. I think he's yeah. He definitely. He's a beast. I feel Chino's like it comes it's down weird that he is because he's so good. Yeah. I feel like yeah, it comes down to if Chino actually likes take like takes over that leader role, and if he doesn't, then Nick will probably step in for yeah. him. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And then, how big of an impact do you think this has on Hook? You know, I've heard I've heard comments and rumors basically saying the slasher leadership wasn't great for him. He's now this. I know that I expected Hook to come back and just be God. I, that's how I felt about it. Like, he's going to come back and dominate. He didn't really get there, but we saw glimpses. Like, is this now where we're going to see him yeah. elevate to where we expect? Yeah, he's, he's going to be a beast. I think, I think he's just going to get comfortable now. He's going to be able to do what he wants to do on the map. I know for me, like, the last couple of years, that was my problem with my team is, like, they wouldn't let me do what I wanted to do on the map, and I felt uncomfortable. But now I think who can just roam and do his thing, and he's going to be a beast. Well, yeah. I think who did I talk to? I don't remember if that was you at one been. point, but you kind of mentioned, like, when I was talking about your leadership here, you're like, if, if the guys have something they think is a good play and they feel good about it, I'm like, do it. Yeah, I, yeah. I think that was you and yeah, I no, talking no, a while that, back. I mean, playing with Tommy, that's kind of kind of how you have to do it. I mean, if he wants to do something for the most <laughs> part, you'd let him do it. If it, does, if it doesn't work, then you'd be like, all right, let's not do that again. Yeah. But you can't, like – you can't knock it until you try it. And I mean, another thing goes in, going into uh, Kyler, like, he just wasn't having fun. That MV team was not fun. Yeah. Like, you yeah. can see it from the outside in. Like, they would, they <laughs> would 3 0 team and they yeah. would just argue and complain at each other. And like, Kyler's 
a kid that likes to have fun. He plays yeah. Call of Duty all day. So if, if if he's not enjoying himself, you're not. It's not going to be easy to learn, and he wasn't learning as fast. I think he's going to be an absolute monster the second half of the year. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm uh, I, I'm excited because uh, we went through and graded teams, and this is like, Indy was one where I wasn't really sure. I was like, I, I like it from like a chemistry standpoint for sure. I I, just, I don't know. I mean, yeah. It'll be really exciting to see, but so, certainly some pressure on the leadership role. And we'll see how Decimate's able to do as well. All right. So one of the next things that happens, uh, E United, obviously Silly's off that roster fellow comes into e united so i know that i was i don't know that I'd say i was hypercritical of the exact change because i think fellow is a solid player i just was critical of this because i i guess i didn't think personally a lot changes here but do you guys see it a little bit differently like obviously you have a more insight to pro players and how things will work out like how do you kind of overall feel about the the change there with fellow it's, I, it's weird like it's just weird to me like i felt like silly was really good on that team like i felt like every time we played played a united silly was going off every time i watched i felt like silly was going off maybe like they didn't mesh well like i didn't i don't know like behind the scenes stuff but uh fell is a good player he's a good pickup so it's just gonna see how they do well i know i, I know they were focusing on silly and not getting rid of uh getting rid of him because of a talent or anything i think it was more like communication i think they wanted yeah. someone that talks a lot and i, I think we all know fellow talks too much so. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, so i think they wanted someone to speak up some more like other than clay and i think they might help him well that's what i think clay said on yeah. uh, the nameless yeah. Uh, yeah. podcast he was saying it's just a it's it's big time communication thing it's a pacing yeah. thing which he thinks he can help with i was talking to him outside a little bit earlier and he said like he's having to change the way he plays because a lot like hard point in this game typically for a lot of the maps you want your ar in the hard point with your subs flying around but a lot of the times it's actually silly in the hard point and clay was having to play more aggressive and now with fellow they're trying to like switch it back where clay will now be in the hard point you let fellow kind of run around yeah. with Pristini, but they're trying to get it figured out. Uh, but there's certainly been some sh changes to the team, and I don't know. I'm excited to see how it works out, but I, I, I don't know what to really expect. They just have the to – I think if they're all comfortable, if they can – like you were just saying, changing how they play, like that just – that's with every team. Like if somebody's uncomfortable on the map, like you, everybody's got to change. Like if everybody's comfortable and everybody's doing their thing and they're feeling good, like they're going to be a good team. Well, yeah. somebody on the Nameless Show made one comment that I thought was really interesting. Like this – I can't remember if it was Clay or someone like this is where teams start to get a lot better because you have this big roster man that goes down and everyone sort of brings feedback from their different rosters and everyone sort of improves around that. Like yeah. mm -hmm. what went wrong with this team? What will work with this squad? So yeah. that'll be that'll be exciting to see. Um, let's let's talk about I believe we're gonna go to EG next. So we talked about Silly off that E United roster. Um, this is actually gonna end up so you have enable and nameless that are gonna be removed from the EG roster. Silly and Assault come in. Uh, Priesta, for you, any any key thoughts about this particular change? Um, playing them online, they were nasty. We actually got destroyed oh, by them. Like the 250 to 32 or something like that? Yeah, I mean, to be fair, though, we kind of weren't. <laughs> yeah, we weren't going too hard. We weren't but. going too hard, but, I mean, we still got 28 point clubbed or whatever it was. So. Chris, Chris left. He just put his controller down yeah. and walked away. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I wasn't there for half that map. <laughs> <laughs> if they play how they've been playing online, they could be a really good team. Yeah, this is one, I, I guess for me, it seems like it yeah, maybe... It's a very interesting mix-up of players. Fixes like. the leadership issue and fixes the role issue maybe they had a little bit? Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah I, I mean, I don't know. I think Enable's a really good AR. I think very highly of him. So I, I don't think they really needed to replace him. Like with Assault, I feel like they're very similar play styles. But, and I felt like but, he was like one of their best players. Yeah, I th but yeah. I, I mean, they know more than we do, obviously. And then... You would be skeptical of like of Silly coming into this roster, but I mean he's been playing really well online. But I think he was a really good like fit for you United, and then I, I I think it came down to communication and little stuff like that. So I think Silly's gonna play really well with this roster. I think people are gonna finally see how good he actually is. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean I I've, I've knocked him at times on trading shots yeah. just about the stats, like because he would I mean him at Pristini for me were just like all over the place. It was just yeah, really yeah. inconsistent. But I, I, everything we've been hearing in Money Eights and stuff, he's been destroying. So yeah. we'll see if maybe this lights a fire. It's all him. it's all yeah it's fire all how you mesh. It's all yeah fire how you mesh with teams. Because I mean look at us in AW before Clay teamed with us. Clay wasn't that good at AW, and then he became the best player in yeah. the game. So yeah, being comfortable. Yeah. All right, well let's uh, let's talk about uh, our next team. So uh, first off. What do you guys think was like the overall problem with the team like Echo Fox? Like why 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 was that old Echo Fox roster capable of getting like top six but never able to crack through? Was there anything that, like stood out to you guys? Yeah, they the roles. really they, yeah they were just t had too many slow players. Like Aqua and Assault are the same exact AR player. Uh, Facinto is not the fastest sub player, and then Nato isn't either. So they really just had really weird roles, and like everyone was just like very slow. So on paper, like I, I basically I graded this one pretty high because on paper this seems to fix that from a role standpoint, at least bringing in temp. But I've heard very mixed things that this this won't really help. What are your guys kind of thoughts on it? They they bring in temp now, 
They get rid of, obviously, Assault, so you get a sub for an AR roll. AR roll. It seems like it'll fix things, but I don't know. What do you guys think overall about it? I do think it will fix it a little bit just because it's another sub player playing a more aggressive than compared to like having two very slow ARs, so I think it will fix some of the pacing issues. Tim's not the fastest sub yeah, AR roll, though. Yeah, he's definitely not, but I think it's still regardless of the sub player. Well, so. Isn't Donnie running in flex? Yeah, is he? he is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's he's running team. a flex. Okay, oh, so, so what? Facento and Aqua. But, yeah. no, yeah. so but I think that helps a lot because, I, I mean, I just don't see why you would ever want Aqua using a sub. Like, he's a good sub. I'm not knocking him on that. But, like, he's one of the best ARs to ever play Call of Duty. Like, yeah. why, why are we not letting him run an AR? Yeah. And yeah, tip of the flex sure. may make sense, too, and, since and he's not the fastest sub in the world. Like, this hybrid role might work out. And people also forget Temp came into Call of Duty running an AR. He was the top... For AR and AW when he came on the elevator, he, he was playing with Classic and Slacked, and he was yeah. putting up 1.3s, 1.3s. The only reason why he switched to running a sub is because he was forced to play with Slasher, like on my denial team, and Slasher's obviously running the AR, so Tony had to switch. So Even I, in like eights, I feel like he always wants to run an AR yeah, too. So I, I think yeah. I think Temp will finally, once again, like another roster change that will make him more comfortable as a person and playing his role. Yeah. Well, overall, I mean, it seems like it seems like. Everyone on paper is improving, at least. Like, they're yeah. fixing role issues, mm -hmm. fixing communica communication issues, but obviously not everyone can win the tournament. So we're going to have to wait and see how it turns <laughs> out. But uh, the next team I want to talk about is going to be complexity. So this team kind of comes together, obviously, to get a spot in pools and for stage two because they have two players in Blast and Ricky that were on the team previously with Era and Reckless and kind of held that spot. Is this a team that formed because they had to, or a team that has potential for you guys? I guess, uh, Zuma, we can start with you, because I think you talked about this team a little bit uh, on a show previously. Uh, I mean, they got Doug, so they got potential, man. <laughs> so you know how Doug is. He always finds a way to just be at the top. So I, I think they have a lot of talent. Like, I think Blastful's really good. Yeah, Blastful um, and uh, what's it called? Blastful and Dashy. Yeah, like the two young kids, the yeah, two really raw, talented duo. kids. And it kind of depends on Ricky plays too, because if Ricky is also putting up numbers and playing well in search and CTF, they can be really good. And just having Doug do all the dirty work. Yeah, they just need to play the game the right way. Yeah. If they play the game the right way, they'll be fine. They can be a pretty big threat. Well, yeah. I, we heard. Uh, I think I heard some of the players talk about uh, most overrated players on one of the shows, and Dashy popped up a lot. Do you think that is a? Do you think it is a knock to maybe his skill being over talked a little bit, or is it more people like a pro player just sick of hearing someone not in the league get talked about so much? He just needs more guidance. I yeah. feel like like when I watch him play, because I spectate eights a lot, and you know I watch him play, and he's he's very talented. Like he's he's nasty, but um, you know what he does on the map doesn't make sense sometimes. So I think if he has <laughs> like some guidance and people telling him what to do, he'll eventually he'll just learn and grow as a player, and he'll he'll be really good. So who's that going to uh, be? Facento or somebody? Doug. We, yeah. Doug? I, Maybe, I mean, maybe I don't know. Why does I mean, it say Facento? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> my, my I was thing, still, I was still thinking Echo Fox for some reason in my head. Yeah. Huh? My thing with Dashy is that I don't. I mean, I guess you can say he's overrated because he's not in the league. And like, obviously, if someone's that good, they're gonna have to be in the league. But no one's that good, man. Like, I, I'm sorry to say, it, but there are so many players that if they team with some, like like some like lesser teammates, I'm not saying this is Dashy's teammates' fault, but like, if you go from playing on a pro team. Then, like for example, I retired, and then I came back, and I was on the Echo Fox team in IW. It's it's like it's a different world, man. Like it, it's all about your supporting cast. No one is that good. Like I get what you're saying. You like, can't you can't carry everything. You, I don't yeah, care who you, you are. You can't yeah. just carry a team to a championship. And I feel like calling him overrated is the wrong word to use there. Okay. Yeah. No, I I, th I actually agree with that. I thought yeah. it was more just. I thought it was partially players just sick of hearing his name so much, considering uh, he's not yeah. like in the league. I it's, see where you're coming from on that. Like I see where <laughs> the players are coming from on yeah. that, but like. I feel like a lot of professional players that are on some of these top teams forget like who they are in the sense of like, if you have like other teammates around you, you're not just going to be placing and winning events. And they just don't want Dashy taking their spot. <laughs> people just yeah, start yeah. talking trash. I, just, I, just, I had the whole argument about him last yep. year, yeah. saying because people were saying that he's overrated in eights because he was taking over money eights, and I was like. I mean, dude, look, he's getting top 12, but I was like, look at his supporting cast compared to look at your supporting cast. They then, banned him. They yeah. banned they him banned from money. Formal ban me from money age. Yeah, yeah, like, what was that? I, I could talk about this argument forever. I was Yeah, that was so dumb. Yeah. Like, Well, I saw, I, I did hear, uh, what I think it was on the name of the show as well, they asked, like, the, the, the least favorite person to play against online. I think Priest was mentioned yeah. by every single yeah. player. And I was like, well, that means he's probably just dominating you is mostly what it boils yeah. down to. But now you've won the tournament. You've proved everything you need yeah, to. exactly. So, so I can't really say that yeah, now. Exactly. That's true. <laughs> Get back into those money aids. Well, you've been playing a lot, though. Yep. Uh, all right. So the last one I think we're going to talk about is just uh, 
another pro league team, which is Unilad. So they they drop Moose, which we know is a veteran player who's been, at least in my eyes, kind of hit or miss throughout his career. Sometimes he's great. Sometimes he's blamed for everything, like what that TCM roster with Aches and TP. <laughs> um, so they get rid of him. They, they pick up Alex. I don't know a ton about Alex. I've cast him a couple times. Does. I don't think any of us do. So what, what do you think overall then about getting rid of maybe a veteran for maybe a uh, younger, more talented I player? I think that's a very good move just because if he's the veteran's inconsistent, it could hurt the team, obviously. But if Alex is, he's a new player. We don't really know much about him. And he could just potentially be nasty. If he is nasty and can match what Scraps does on the map, that could be like a nasty sub duo. And they could really Scraps has over. been free. Yeah, he's yeah. good. Yeah. He's a big, another, I think Scraps is really, yeah, yeah, he's Scraps been playing amazing good. recently. So yeah, they get another sub player that can help him out and put up those numbers, they, they could be amazing. Yeah. Cup and Moose I, was weird, though. I, I don't know. The, the times we played Unilad in this year throughout the league in, in the brackets or pool play or whatever, I, I feel like Moose is the one yeah. that's fine. Yeah, he's he's Scraps plays really well, too, but I feel like it's always like Moose is one off streaks. we got to kill He's got yeah. streaks again. Like I feel like <laughs> yeah. that's every time we play them. And but. maybe it's one of those, maybe it was a communication thing yeah. or just yeah. maybe, yeah, so that's, maybe they need know. a little bit of a honeymoon period. And I don't maybe know enough about against Alex us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe he was just really good against well, us. Sometimes too. you had that. Like I remember, what was yeah. it last year? Who was it that I always thought of that with? Oh, it was, uh, it was Splice versus Silly. Every single time I saw Silly play Splice, he just crushed them. Yeah. I don't know why. It was just that particular matchup. Yeah. He destroyed them. But sometimes you have that. I don't know. It's just like a matchup yeah. thing or like a mental thing. Yeah, where some players like, have I'm confidence against certain yeah. people, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Okay. Uh, then I do want to get from each of you. We can start with replays on the end. Overall, with all the changes, what, do, I guess, do you think? I, I don't I don't necessarily need to know, like, who do you think is going to finish the best, but, like, what do you think was overall, like, the best change out of uh, four? The envious change. I think, I think, Interesting. well, I don't think you could get much worse than that old Envy team in the <laughs> sense of, like, not <laughs> yeah. talent, but, like, the way they just kept, like, kind of disappointing themselves. I think I said Temp's going to go to Echo Fox. I think he plays well with himself. I think Kyler gets a lot better. I think that envious change is probably the, the most improved. But do you think, well, I mean, they have a fourth place finished do you think that envy team has potential now to push yeah. past that you do? I, yeah okay. i do i th i think i i feel like a lot of roster changes talked about every pro every like every fan too they all talk about how good they're going to be at hard point and we won the tournament and it was not because of our hard point like i i feel like this new envy team picking up decimate they're going to be a good search team and i think that's going to take them a long way search is what gets you through those long runs in those tournaments being good at that game five game mode it's what it's wins huge. you the series we've lost three winners brackets I think two of them round yeah. 11 searches. Like if we win those searches, those go a long way. And well, you guys yeah. in the playoffs, we won the searches. You and look yeah, what happened. I've had yeah. plenty of practice exactly. in game yeah. fives. Like yeah. Finally, Birmingham yeah. alone, like it paid I, off. There was part of me. I said a couple times on broadcast that I thought the Birmingham run for you guys was like a good thing for playoffs because you yeah. had so many damn game fives, like so many extended yeah. series. Like just getting prepared. You just get there so much. It's yeah. like, well, now we know what we're doing. I wonder <laughs> yeah. what the number is of how many yeah. game fives you've actually we've had all year. Oh, we've had so many. You you had to have. You had to have. Priesta for you. Um. Best change? Anything that stands out for you? Um, I'm going to have to go with MV2 just because I feel like that change will make Kyler a lot better. Uh, he's a lot more comfortable now, I feel like, and he's just going to go off. So I think MV2. Zuma, for you, a different team or still feeling good about um, with the rest of them? Yeah, I hate to be repetitive, but I think MV2. I just, it's I kind of think... cool to hear. I mean, yeah. I, 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 part of me surprised because I didn't know what to think at first. So hearing from you guys is pretty. Yeah, pretty... it's definitely like a weird mix. Like at first I was like, it's a little weird. But then when you look at it on paper and we scrimmed them and stuff, they're like, yeah, they're pretty good. They know what they're doing. So. All right. Good. Last for you. Um, I'm, I'm most excited to see how the new Rise team plays. I either want them to just be like godlike or maybe if they're a little bit worse and like TK beats them potentially. I just want to see what happens because of that because I feel like there's so much pressure pressure on the rise team and then slasher because they were all there was so much there's talked about so much it means so good that was, i'm really excited to see them play this weekend no i uh, i absolutely need the the rise tk yeah that would be a sure. great that, match that should be very very good but let's uh let's continue to move on now we're going to hop to our next segment which is going to be cwl declassified so instead of talking about the past and playoffs we're going to move it forward now and talk about uh this weekend right so we don't know everything with our pools because we're waiting on some relegation matches to finish up but can we take a look now at just a graphic here for Seattle? So this is what we've got right now. So the only thing that you could add to this, from my understanding it's happened so far, is Mind Freak is qualified to get back into Stage 2. They've qualified for pools, and they will be slotted into Pool C. So it'll be Luminosity, E United, Complexity, and then Mind Freak. The rest of it we're kind of waiting on. There's a Vitality versus EG match that I'm not sure that is finished. The winner of that will go into Pool D, and then we just kind of have to wait to see yeah, how relegation yeah. finishes out. Okay, EG just won. I literally was okay. just told so, that. So EG will slot into pool D. And that's then, a tough pool. And yeah, then I think we're waiting these. for that's what? a really tough pool. We're waiting yeah. for Tainted Minds, Vitality, Epsilon, and GGEA Orange uh, to get it done. So, yeah, guys, we, we typically record Hot Mike the day before, and it'll play before the matches on Friday. So we're in the midst of relegation right now, just trying to wait yeah. and see. But um, 
we had it up there quickly. I, I thought your guys was the pool of death without question yeah. when I first saw it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Everyone agrees. So it's I, it's I, pool I A and yeah. pool D are the two toughest pools. Yeah, for sure. Certainly. And then you guys, well, at least you're going to get somebody that comes out of losers from relegation and not, you know, let's say an, an, an EG coming yeah. in or a Mind Freak who, who knows what you get from Mind Freak. They could come in and. Yeah. Well, we can get Orange now too, right? Did they lose? That's yeah. true. Yeah, they they're a pretty good orange. team. So yeah, Orange yeah. is a good team. Typically, they get to pool play though and don't do much. But maybe but this they're is starting in pool play this time. So yeah, that's true. They, they, that changes everything. They don't have that whole. Well, actually, we there. started in pool play at two events and got 12th. We went went to open bracket and got fourth. So <laughs> we might want to go back <laughs> yeah. to open bracket. Yeah, we should. <laughs> we should go back. <laughs> yeah, I'm down. <laughs> well, can we actually bring up the pool graphic one more time, if possible, just because I want to get your guys uh, just overall thoughts quickly before we continue moving through the show. Um, we'll bring it up one more time. Is there any? I guess is there a pool that stands out maybe with upset potential? I guess maybe C, complexity over E United. Well, D, obviously, Any, twice okay. red. Who the yeah, hell knows anyone, there? AG, yeah, yeah. Any anyone, pool. whoever's hot, can just come out of pool D. Uh, that's going to be probably – I feel like pool D will be, like, the most competitive pool. All the teams are, like, around, like, the same skill level and have the same potential. So it's going to be interesting to see who, who gets top two out of these pools. Well, this is – I didn't even know, like, I, I picked I picked Optic to win this weekend. I haven't picked them to win an event the entire year, but just based off of – I'm just going to say it while you're all here, I thought they probably should have won stage one playoffs. Oh, yeah, they should have. <laughs> they, they, they probably should have. They, they, they didn't. <laughs> they should have four out of us. <laughs> First series. Uh, um, I thought they were going to. They, they, they fall short, obviously, and I thought this weekend would be – when they would do it, but then now I've heard they haven't really scrimmed much, so I, yeah. I don't know what to think uh, this Optic team will do. But for their pool and Pool B, do you think? I think they're the heavy favorites. They are, and then do you think, I've, you guys have all been pretty positive with Envy. Is Envy a heavy favorite then as well for you guys? Yeah. They could definitely upset yeah. Optic. I would say Optic sure. and Envy are top two for sure. In those okay, pools. so that's an easy one to call? Yeah, it comes yeah. down to the searches, man, I'm yeah. telling you. Yeah. A lot of teams, uh, I've just said before, hard points, not everything. I think uh, if this Envy team could take searches off this Optic team, take one respawn that goes to game five, anything can happen. Is it something about this particular title? Like, is search a little bit more consistent maybe than the past that because I, I i'll be honest when i first came into call of duty i was with the whole snd wins championships yeah during the jetpack era i was much more a hard point yeah, it's, guy it's, uh, well, but yeah. now is it a little a little bit different yeah i mean it comes down to the jetpacks like you can outclass a team very easy as we all saw optic outclass many teams throughout that jetpack era but like now that it comes back to boots on the ground there's a lot of gunfights that if someone's in the head glitch it doesn't matter if you're formal or me it doesn't yeah. matter you're gonna get the kill like you know what I mean? the like, positioning is so, yeah. even more important so, and teamwork go, yeah teamwork so teamwork is, uh, so teamwork and that you can't just outclass teams so sometimes like teamwork and like a few plays go the wrong way for you you don't end up winning so. everybody's gotta yeah. be on the same page yeah, yeah. well it's yeah. uh it's been it's been thrilling this far we've had what four different tournament winners and who knows maybe we'll get a fifth this weekend yeah uh let's take a look speaking of the weekend let's take a look at the schedule to kick matches off uh we're gonna look through I believe we have a graphic for Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta. So can we show Alpha here first? So we're going to start it off with, wow, that's going to be a doozy for Pool D. Red versus Splice to kick things off. Uh, looking through it, well, God, I was going to say, do any matches really stand out? But typically when you're looking at the Alpha matches, they all kind yep, of do. Yeah. Like, they're all big, These right? They're all very good matches. I think I was up at 9.30. Sheesh. <laughs> that's my bedtime. <laughs> but, yeah, well, all it, these matches hey, are amazing. It's a little bit earlier. Typically, I think when we're on the East Coast, oh, we start yeah. at 4, I believe, yeah. on Friday. So, yeah, yeah. a little bit earlier of an evening. Can we take a look at uh, the Bravo matches at well, uh, as well for those at home? So, you can take a look through the what full schedule. Matches, okay. yeah. I'm excited kind of to see how man. Unilad plays. Yeah, yeah. with the new roster. I wonder how Alex is going to do, if he's going to live up to like his expectations well they, they come in they believe in him they've so got optic and envy to kick things yeah, off so they can come and get upset there yeah. yeah the competition's crazy man what team yeah. did really? alex come from i i saw a picture uh, of him in, in a fuse jersey see i remember him from infused. infused back in like black ops 3 champs that that is the last time i remember like okay. thinking of his name it was what? like black ops 3 champs what kind of player is he though is he a sub player like is he like I an aggressor? I think he's an aggressive sub player. I think he's a sub. I think. Honestly, I, I could have made that up. Yeah, I, 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 I could have made that I, up. I don't know. Well, yeah. I'm trading shots. I'm trading shots. <laughs> nah, he's a flex. I'm trading, <laughs> trading shots. We had the question like to, to grade that particular change. I was like, I, I don't know. I, yeah, I haven't no. seen him play. I, don't think anyone does. I really don't think anyone. <laughs> yeah, like, literally no one has any idea. Well, it's hey, maybe this is coming out party. Yeah, uh, yep. We'll quickly take uh, just so you guys can see at home. If you want to take a screenshot of this, from there the we podcast. are. First matchup for us right there, three thirty versus the relegation. And team. these are all Pacific time. So for those of you on the East Coast, there is going to be that three hour time difference. So don't let it fuel. Uh, Fool you. We have uh, this is our first time, I believe, in the Pacific Northwest, and then Delta, wow. the final. That relegation team plays a lot of matches. Yeah. Yeah, it's like 12 matches. They play all, they play all those matches straight. That relegation team. <laughs> well, I think those are starting to slot it in. Nah, like, no, what teams funny. they are. <laughs> 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 yes, that will all be EG as they all play through. Uh, all right, so I do want to touch then on um, 
one more segment of the show because obviously coming into this weekend, uh, there was a big change. When you take a look at Stage 1 playoffs and now to CWL Seattle, we probably had the biggest update and meta change you could say to of Call of Duty eSport, maybe in the history of Call of Duty. So a yeah. massive change goes through, and I want to hear from you guys. Uh, first and foremost, just maybe what, what you're liking about the update thus far. Uh, Attach, we can start with you. What I'm pretty happy about is that uh, Armored is a big thing right now. It blocks stuns and nades, and I hated getting stunned before. So now <laughs> that like I, we can't get stunned and search and hardpoint, I feel like, well, stuns will be used to like kind of spot people. You throw over there, they're like, okay, he's there. It's really like an EMP it back in Black Ops Yeah, it really doesn't do anything for them. So uh, I'm really excited that I can't get stunned and keep running around the map, run to the head glitches, and just be very aggressive. For me, it's the streaks. Like, yeah, uh, that especially too. with us. We fed streaks. Yeah, heavy. we're so aggressive. <laughs> we like, fed we, would, heavy. we would lose hard points just because we feed people streaks. Yeah. So we now that like 50 and they would have like 10 streaks. I, yeah, I, there's got to be a stat somewhere. Someone, someone. JP, has help it. us out. We had to be the worst team of getting streaks yeah. ever. We yeah, never got ever. streaks and we feed streaks like and crazy. We, we and would we'll still up, barely lose. We would be up on a team like 200 to like 50 and then be like, uh, fighter pilot inbound and be like, H how? Yeah. How did that? Like, we <laughs> have no idea. time we don't even know they got yeah. streaks. Yeah. Like, well, I thought of uh, the two teams that I thought about when the update first came out for streaks that I thought this would help would be teams like you or like uh, maybe like an Optic game. Like, I remember talking to Optic when Valkyrie came out. And they were like, we love this. Like, you can't really streak that much this map. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if it's just gun it's gunfights, yeah. like, we're going to win. Yeah. So now, is it is it much more reliance kind of on, on gunfights, especially yeah. with the change yeah. of streaks especially and stuns. because it takes so long to get those streaks. Like, you got to hold those setups, got to keep in control of the game, and uh, it just, that's gun skill right there. Pre yeah. say anything for you that really sticks yeah. out? Um, the unlimited sprint, I actually like that a lot, just because I don't have to keep do. clicking my left stick. <laughs> We're all a bunch yeah. of my left thumb would be sore sometimes, not, not even kidding. Oh, yeah, no. Was grinding. Especially if you play, like, 8 to 10 hours a day, like, your hand definitely starts hurting after a while. <laughs> Every so. time I would look at, uh, like, when I was playing just a ton of rank when the game first came out, like, I had a brand-new scuff controller, and the left stick was always just destroyed. Yeah. Like, the right was totally fine. The other one's just completely worn down because mm -hmm. it was mashing sprint <laughs> over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess I want to hear, you know, you talked about what you liked about it, but, like, at its at its core, then, do you think this is kind of a, a help to your team, like overall? I think it is. I, I saw Nameless talking on the podcast saying Airborne is gonna hurt, like no Airborne is gonna hurt us because I don't know we're a fast team. But I feel like the unlimited sprint, the not getting stunned, not feeding streaks, like I feel like it just that's just really well with our yeah, team. Yeah, I feel everything everything that's changed this year has kind of like helped our team in a in a little bit in like a yeah. way. So I feel like they just keep helping us and hopefully I mean, we keep winning. So they're mostly what we're gonna see Airborne, or sorry, armored energetic for your yeah. subclasses, yeah. Armored, armored scope, scope. mostly for, for uh, your maybe ARs. some infantry hunker at uh, sometimes if you want to get that very quick strafe speed. Well, and you yeah. also have to take off armored to throw smokes now. Yeah. 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 So that yeah. that'll change a little bit too. Yeah. And so putting out like a mountain or infantry on your sub or AR just to throw a smoke in a hard point. Do you think it changes SMB. results much, or you kind of expect? Well, I mean, up. people are saying like the airborne thing, like people can't be fast anymore. But like, like Preston, like the like you guys are fast players, but like they're not fast because they 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 are not the only three people in the game that use airborne. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Right, <laughs> everyone's right. at the same speed. Yeah, so, like, they're what, fast players yeah, because they yeah. get a kill and they push up on the map. Like, that's not what perk you're running. Yeah. Like, well, go 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 watch yeah. like a sub. Let's say. Go watch Kenny yeah. play and then go watch Temp play. Yeah. They are very, very different. It's not because Kenny had airborne yeah. on. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, I yeah, think no, people so are looking at it very one-sided there. Yeah, yeah, when they were talking about it on the podcast, it yeah. made no sense. All right. Well, it'll, it'll be interesting. I'm really excited to see how Al boils down. And for me, it's been sort of um, – I mean, it's the first time I can think of something this major happening at this point, but it's it's just like refreshing almost. Like I'm excited, yeah. I'm yeah, excited yeah. to see what's going to change. Like you feels think, like a new game. Yeah, yeah it kind of does. New like, content, like oh, there's but, new teams. I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, I was grinding like 10 to 12 hours after the update. I was, oh, yeah. I was like, <laughs> we got a new game. Let's go. I was sure. <laughs> money get banned from money eights. Eights. No, it's, and even for me as a caster, like I we cast so much with the pro league. Like we're we're basically casting double the amount we did last year. So even just like a little bit of a refreshing, something to like kind of get me more excited. Like I love it, man. Like uh, yeah. it, it's yeah. a blast. Okay, so let's move on then to our next segment. That's going to be player intel. So here we're going to talk a little bit, uh, kind of a, a little bit more personal stuff. Take a look at maybe some tweets and stuff as well. Uh, the first one is going to be attached, mostly just because this photo cracked me up. Um, <laughs> this is, a, I believe, a JCAP tweet maybe. Oh, God. <laughs> no, no, oh, it's from the phase cut tweet. updates. Oh, God. Oh, okay, I see. The phase cut updates. What was happening here? Was this I Halloween, was a, at least? I was an angel. Wait, did Emily, <laughs> did, did Emily leak this? Tweet? Yeah, I don't no, know. Someone Emily? some, <laughs> someone from my town must have leaked it. But, like, before, every day, every Halloween, I find something right before I'm about to leave because I never dress up. I don't care that much. So I just grab something. I was the same way. It was angel wings. That time I was an angel. You are an angel. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I could be your devil or your angel. See, I think you, I've always thought you were or angel. Or your angel. 
Oh, you're angry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought you were like the, you struck me as like the nicest kid, like really respectful. Like, and then I talked to J-Cap and he would just always tell me how annoying you were when he teamed yeah. with you. He just, he made you he sound like the devil. Me. He bullied me. <laughs> Did he? Yeah. Is J-Cap just a big uh, bully? Yeah, yeah, he is. Yes. I, I highly bully. disagree with that. <laughs> J-Cap's your dad, so. That's right. You were, you were part of that <laughs> team as well. I was part of that team, yeah. The, the denial J -J -Cap team. J-Cap is no, J -Cap's no bully. <laughs> they have no bullets. <laughs> All right. Um, now, finally, a clip I've been excited to get to. So, you know, replays, you had just incredible moments throughout the grand final. You clutched the 1v3, and you you reacted in such a way that our League Ops team, I was worried they were going to have to shut you down. You were just wild. Let's take a look I at it. That's too crazy on you. <laughs> <laughs> I actually didn't see that clip of him actually yawning. That's yeah, hilarious. Like he he wants to fall asleep. asleep. <laughs> This is this is legitimate. This is in finals. Yeah, this yeah. is during the grand oh final. God. So talk to me a little bit, because obviously <laughs> I don't want to say you get flack, but there are a lot of comments about. It. Like I see it on Twitter, I see it uh, in the comments in the Twitch chat or you know MLG chat. What what, what is the reasoning for? It? Is it like a mechanism where you're trying to kind of keep yourself focused and calm down? Like what what brings on yawning in a grand final? Because I don't I don't get it. I was chilling, man. <laughs> yeah, just playing. I mean. It's just know, another day of Call of Duty. We yeah. play Call of Duty for hours it's and it, upon hours. And to me, to day. me, to me, it never feels that intense, like ever. Yeah. Like so, like I, like it, I guess that's a bad thing and a good thing. Like I don't know. Like it doesn't make when I'm playing. Like I'm into it. I call out. I'm pretty sure my teammates can vouch that I don't yeah. stop talking in game. But like, I don't know. It's just another day, man. Between, yeah. between maps, it's just yeah. it's it's, was, it's wild yeah. to me. I was a little tired. <laughs> He's like the only person that looks like that when like you're in between maps. Like no one else is like no. sitting there just like yawning. No. I think it's hilarious though. No, no, it cracks. It's absolutely hysterical. When we're casting and it goes to him like, oh, replay is thrilled again. <laughs> it was a big moment with a big play. But you guys joked a little bit. We're going to get to the next person in a second. But I do want to talk about the fact that I think you tweeted out, but you guys talked about just your comms are like a, were a bit like unusual during the grand final. Yeah. Like you guys were joking around a lot, like yeah, I almost laughing. Dropped, I almost dropped Priesta mid grand final. <laughs> Yeah, he said he had to go like 4 and 20 or something. I, I was like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, all right, guys. Yeah. Everyone, Chris is like quadruple neg, so yeah. everyone just go start baiting for him. Let's get his KD up a and little And they bit. didn't bait. They started stealing my KD. <laughs> yeah, dude, I was trying to get my – because my KD, which I never have a good KD, and everyone roasts me for it. I finally have That's a good true. KD. I finally have a good KD going to that event. <laughs> I was playing great the entire event. I get to the finals, and I ended up with like a point nine because these guys are <laughs> taking my kills. I think you were, <laughs> I think were a point nine nine. You were like right Yeah, under. and if they didn't steal my kills, I would have had a 1. <laughs> and I should have had like a 1.2, but I got destroyed in those maps. Well, I think yeah. it, I think it was uh, I was talking to Chance or JP right before uh, the stage one playoffs, and you guys were the only team in every single game mode where everyone had like a positive KD or something like that. Like, it was some weird stat that I was like, yeah. what? That changed hmm. quickly. Was that for just playoffs or for? No, or? like the year to that point. Oh, oh really? Yeah, the year to that point, like in all game modes, there were only like a, a couple of teams that, that like you'd have like a, I don't know, let's say Envy and Hardpoint and Phase, but you were in every game mode where like all of you guys were positive. Well, because like a, a lot path. of our losses come from stupid mistakes. Yeah, like yeah. Uh, it's not because like a lot of people like to say like I play bad or something or like it's never really like oh someone just got absolutely torched. It's yeah. usually because someone made a boneheaded yeah. mistake and we lose by like a point. Uh, that would cost you. Yeah. Those yeah. games where you're out slaying but still mistakes. losing is uh, yep. never never fun. <laughs> Yeah. All right, Zuma, you're up next. Uh, we, you know, we played some of your dad's voicemails in the past, but they <laughs> never did. ceased to entertain me. This yeah. was after you got the victory. Can we, uh, can we please roll this clip? Because oh, it's God. just, it's awesome, it's man. Unbelievable, unbelievable, Mr. MVP. You played your ass off. You know, <clears throat> you're you just, a, you're an animal. You just, you just. <laughs> 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 you know, he's like you're swinging too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Beast. And the team played well. Preston, Chris, Attach, got to give it to them, too. You know, they, 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 they hung in there. Chris, Chris played his heart out. Chris played his heart out. You know what I mean? He stepped up, man. He stepped up. And Preston, what can I say? He's just a little f***ing <laughs> water. <laughs> you know what I mean? And Attach, oh, is just, Attach is just Attach. You know what I mean? He does what he needs to do. He's also a beast. You know what I mean? I'm proud of you. I don't know what else to say to you, man. He's so supportive. Uh, That's awesome. Just, yeah. Just, no, that is. How you not love the guy? You know. Now rest up. I got to, to uh, I got to talk to him a little Seattle. bit about Birmingham. He was just, uh, he was awesome. Man. Yeah. He, he, just see like how much he loved you, how much he was passionate about you doing well. It was very, very cool to see. But we had to play it because it's just, it's, it's, it's yeah, When it's we won the grand finals, I looked at my phone and there was 30 voice messages. Because <laughs> he doesn't know how to type. Like he oh doesn't know. God. So he just sends me voice messages. It took me 30 minutes to get through all of them. But he was crying through like half of them. Oh, he was so happy. That's so. awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. That's, yeah. that's, a, that's an awesome moment for you guys. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about it. Um, we're not going to get into it too much, but obviously, um, 
for people who have been kind of following you in your career, you were going through some personal stuff kind of outside of the game yeah. um, leading into playoffs. Now, I guess I guess I kind of want to hear how you dealt with that. Like, if you're dealing with some stuff in your life, how the hell do you go get MVP and win the tournament? Cause Fired me up. <laughs> like, I know a lot of players, like, you know, obviously girl issues and stuff that a lot of players shut down. That stuff fires me up, man. It Apparently, because you, you, you win a tournament, 50 yeah. grand for you, yeah. 200 across the team. So it was just uh, motivation for you? Yeah. That's how, that's how yeah. it worked out? Yeah, motivation. I, a lot of people get sad from that stuff. I just have anger issues. I get pissed off, and it makes me play better. <laughs> well, so. you, you, you might need to piss him off a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we should do. It was, it was an idea, maybe. But the way he was playing, man, that was uh, that was unbelievable. But, uh, yeah, I was just curious because some people might, you know, fold, not put forward their best foot, and not have the best performance, but you played amazing. So Thank congrats you. again on the victory, and uh, big fan, buddy. Big fan. Appreciate it, man. Uh, next up, Priesta. We've got a funny picture and tweet that I enjoyed. Um, <laughs> you didn't want me at my, then you can't have me at. Dude, Preston looks like the devil in here. <laughs> like, so what's, like what's, what's the first picture? That just back when you were on AMT? Yeah, basically? no, that was uh, at my first event back oh, at AW okay. uh, at UMG Cali when I was under a, an organization called Royalty. It was um, myself, Catman, Pickles, and Fair. Pickles. From hey. Pickles, from Pickles to Zuma. Yep. yep. I got a, I got a better picture of that one on the left too. Oh, you I got, oh, I got a better picture. Than that. Oh, I know which one you're yeah, talking I, about. Yeah, the yeah, one exactly with, with the phone about. in the mirror. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, he actually looks like the devil. From like I don't think, I don't think I'd ever tweet that out. I'd feel too bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Well, uh, I, I just want, you don't have to go too far in depth, but I guess I just want to hear a little bit about, uh, just quickly, your, your kind of road into all this because I think at least compared to the other three teammates, like there's a lot less known about you, right? Like yeah. you're kind of the new guy. So just give me a quick story. It's kind of how, how you got into this position to be on the phase. Like how had you get here and now you're winning tournaments? We just yeah. decided to team with friends. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what everyone was my saying. Friend was level, in, was my friend, friend level with friend. that guy is really high, so we're going to pick him up. <laughs> the <laughs> F is priest and Y is young phase. Like, all I he saw. Was just a friend that I played MWR Well, you with. tweeted out, uh, I think you deleted it, but I saw you Probably. tweeted out one, uh, it was like a Reddit comment that basically, uh, that's, what, that's what everyone was saying. Like I think it was a Reddit comment that basically said like, I've been a phase fan forever and <laughs> this team there's just no goddamn way they're gonna win a tournament if they win a tournament you could ban me from reddit yeah, forever there's it. so many people saying stuff yeah. Like oh yeah I now, now you're here so like can you tell me it's a little bit about yeah. the road kind of getting to the spot <laughs> yeah so like i started variant back in ghost i went to like a few locals i think it was like four or five somewhere around there and then going into aw i went to one event got top 20 there and then black ops 3 i was underage so i kind of just grinded snd tournaments and just streamed and did all that stuff Kind of got my name out there a little bit from that. So you're like in the Illy and Simp yeah, world, yeah, like yeah. Kind of during that. Well, I, played, I actually played with Simp a lot back in Black Ops 3. Makes sense. He's he's a beast. But um, and then going into IW, I teamed with oh, who was it? TGC. It was uh myself, Exotic, Mox. Oh, that's right. Drama. That's right. Remember drama. That, that yeah, TGC drama. Team. You guys yeah. were what? Like a series away from yeah, but making it into the league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that versus like EG. Yeah. yeah, that was so, that was wild. Yeah, so we missed out on the league by one match. So. And then after that, um, got picked up by C9. They were going into relegation. Uh, we qualified through relegation. And then coming into this year, it was at Champs that where Tommy and Chris came up to me and were like, yo, we're thinking about teaming with you. And I was like, I'm down. Like, yeah, of course I, I was down. I, I bet. Like, like yeah, yeah, yes? Yeah, I was like, uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> so then after that, uh, got picked up on phase, and now I'm here. Yeah, you know talent when you see it. I mean, a lot of people are always like, why, why, why? But they don't understand. Like, we see stuff that just other people don't see. I, I know Chris is, you know, really yeah, good at that. To be honest, Chris did that with all of us. Like, Chris yeah, picked up did. Tommy, and then one, Chris picked up me, and then one, now Chris Preston, and then one. So yeah. Chris, so is Chris, has, Chris has an eye for talent. He's <laughs> yep. a dad. He's just taking these checks, yep. put them in the bank. Yep. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks <guys>. kids. <laughs> There's Thanks, another dad. 50 Gs. <laughs> all right. Well, let's see it uh, to one of our final segments here, guys. We're going to do the community questions. So uh, we got a question for each of you that came in here. Uh, the first one. One we're going to take a look at. This is a question for Attach. Now, we'll read this question, and then you might have to explain the backstory on it a little bit. But uh, we'll Attach by a Gucci jacket <laughs> after taking the W. Uh, explain sort of where the Gucci jacket came from, because didn't you well, get Zero's mid Yeah, it was actually something? Zero and I were just chilling up in the pro lounge. Uh, we were talking. We're like, and he was, we were both like still in the tournament. This was before that they got knocked out. And um, I'm like, yo, if I win, you give me a thousand bucks. If you win, I'll give you a thousand bucks. And this is like never really happened before. Everyone makes bets like these at all these tournaments, and they really never usually happen. But uh, 
we uh, ended up winning somehow. Like, he gave me his Gucci jacket because I randomly am like, yo, can I wear your Gucci jacket just because I liked it? I liked the way it looked. It looked cool. What series did you put it on? Uh, I think I put it on versus United, maybe. Okay. Yeah, it was the second day. It was the second day versus You were losing like, full the one time you didn't have it, too. Oh, yeah, teams. we played TK, like, first match on Sunday, and I was DMing him, like, wake up. I tweeted him, DM. <laughs> I'm like, yo, wake up. Are you up? Yo, are you at the venue? Please bring me your Gucci jacket. We won first map by, like, 100. I put the Gucci jacket on, dropped 11 second map. We're up two overs TK to throw off the <laughs> Sunday run. And I was like, okay, we're going to do Did this. Did you get one? Nah, hell no. <laughs> hell no. I ain't spending no money. I'm broke. <laughs> no, you're saving. But I did give zero thousand dollars. I did give zero thousand dollars cash. Really? Yeah. Did. Oh hell yeah. 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 Did you make a video? Page. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> I would have. <laughs> no, that that's awesome though. That's awesome. Uh, all right, next one. I believe this is uh, for Zuma, and I think kind of attaches well. Uh, why did you two stick together and face for three whole years without giving up? Any motivations and things that kept you together? Perfect duo. Uh, it truly paid off, and I'm proud of the season one win. Phase up. Oh, I just always knew we weren't the problem. Like, when you're losing, you know what the problem is, and you see a bunch of fans you know, saying what the problem is, and then you have teammates who, who try and make excuses because they, they want to keep their spot on the team. But um, I always knew Dylan was a, you know, a beast. I always thought we were good together. Well, so. I even said it. I think it was the first time I'd ever said it over the three years. I think it was at playoffs. At one point I said, like, maybe if this doesn't work out, I didn't think you guys were the issue either, but I was almost like, maybe you just need to split yeah, up. Yeah, I mean, like, I was yeah. even thinking that at one time, too. But then I was yeah. like, nah, there's no way. I'll go back and watch Vibes. And I was like, like, I don't know what we're doing. Like, there's, I don't know. So, I don't know. Well, yeah. I have no idea. You guys stuck through it. Yeah, just yeah. stuck through it. And Friendship strong as ever? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do, Our friend level's real up there. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we team, just because we're friends. Yeah. <laughs> Friendship. <laughs> That'll be the new way teams are formed. Like, I like you. I like you. Teaming with friends. <laughs> <laughs> All right, replace. Uh, next for you. Uh, this is going to be a question coming in, I believe, about kind of your pistol use. Uh, we've seen you use. That is not what I was expecting. Okay, so there's a different <laughs> question than I thought it was. Uh, so for Priesta, what was it like winning your first grand finals after only – uh, teaming with him at the start of World War II? Um, I mean, it was sick. I mean, I always knew, like, if I had a good team, I would have the ability to win. And I feel like coming into this year, like, getting on this team was, like, huge for me. Like, I knew everyone was, like, really good on this team, and I knew we could win. Did doubt ever enter your mind when you guys were struggling to win? Like, when the open tournaments weren't going the way you expected to? Or, like, you, you just knew you were going to get there? two in four 2Ks at the beginning of yeah, the year? Yeah, no, we started off really slow. We got, what, yeah, four top, four top 32s in the 2Ks. But then we got fourth at Dallas, and after that, I was like, ooh, like, we could win. And then we kind of went downhill a little bit, but, like, every series we were losing was, like, super close, and I yeah. knew, like, we could we could win those. They were going to yeah. start going our way eventually. Yeah, exactly. It's actually wild yeah. to think of that you guys, like, started this year in the in the goddamn open bracket. Yeah, and yeah, now you're winning yeah. stage one playoffs. Like, that's a that's a really cool story. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the good struggles story. you guys had to, to build your way there. And not that it's a... Shows absolute, our character. It's not been a, a, you know, a growth. <laughs> there have been some bumps throughout. Oh, of but course. still, the fact that you went from open bracket to four... We just always believe. We believe and work hard. That's all it did. I love your guys' squad. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> uh, and the replays. The last one is for you. Uh, I alluded to the question, but this is going to be basically about, uh, I believe the question is, why do you always use the PO8? Any specific reasons? Because you're one of the few that we see actually pull that out. I mean, mostly it's the machine pistol. Uh, well, it's better than the machine pistol. I, I, I don't think, I really don't think you can argue that. I know people like can't like try to, but I mean, I played a lot of MWR with Preston and I probably use the deagle more than I use like that. Guys cross mapping people with deagles. Yeah, like for fun. Well, why? Like, okay, so, so I love I love single shot weapons from the FAL and Black Ops 2 to like any other a single shot weapon that we can play with. Like I, I love them so. But typically I, if it's, it's better perfect. more people use it, right? It, like well, it, is it's just harder to use. It's, it's harder hard, to it's use. It's harder yeah. to use, I guess. So, well, some people like for example, I like single shot weapons or even burst weapons. Like I love the M8 like so I like aiming with like with that kind of like style. And if you hit your bullets with the PO8, it is better than the machine pistol yeah. and I find it personally. I find it easier to hit a shot with that pistol, where I feel like I use the machine pistol and I just miss every time I shoot it. So <laughs> okay, all right. Well, interesting. Uh, you, you obviously make plays with it. I remember you you like, kill two people so quickly. Uh, I believe the hard point when you guys. If that was a machine to... pistol, I did not get those two. Kills. Oh, absolutely yeah. not. You yeah. had to reload. Like, yeah. that was, maybe the... maybe the machine pistol before the before it was nerfed. Oh, well, yeah, oh, that yeah. was. But now yeah. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I think it was a cannon. Yeah. But. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's take a look uh, one more time, guys. Just at the Friday schedule. I know uh, we're here for Hot Mike, but more importantly, we are here for CWL Seattle. We're just going to show the Alpha broadcast, but this will be it. This is what's going to kick it off at 2 p.m. Pacific time here in Seattle. Red Reserve and Splice will be starting things off, and then, guys, just to close out the show, we are going to go to our last stand question. This will be just the final moment where you guys are going to give your thoughts on a particular topic, and then. Uh, We'll all be free to go get food because I know we're all very hungry. Yeah, starving. <laughs> oh, me too. All right, so the last stand question. 
after Seattle, which team do you think will need a roster change? Optic. If they don't yeah, I, I think Optic will be the big well? team. Yeah. yeah, just because I feel like last tournament was their tournament to win. Their chemistry might be a little messed up at this tournament, and then however they place, it really depends. If they get top three, I don't think they do, but if they don't, I think there'll be a big change, and that will cause a whole nother roster I, mania. I feel like Karma's the problem for the roster change, but not for the reason you think it is. Like, no. every yeah. time, no, no, I think, yeah, I feel yeah. like every time Karma is targeted that he might be the change, he ends up having an event like he did yeah. in the playoffs and dominates, really, and it's like, amazing. it's like, oh, well, we can't make a change now. Yeah, no. Nah, but I, they're so good. So yeah, talking yeah, about them making I, a change is just so weird. I said it in my yes. other interview before. I still think they are the best team in Call of Duty. Like, even, yeah. like, right now, I know they haven't won and stuff, but, like, they, they were the best the team in the playoffs. They were the best team in the playoffs. Yeah, they, yeah they were. They, they have the talent, and, like, they have what it takes to obviously win. They don't get nervous. Obviously. Like, people are saying, like, this Sunday thing about them of how they don't win on Sunday. Like, it, I, mean, I, yeah. I just think it's a little bit more than that, and that would be the only reason why they'd have to change. But I, I feel like if they can kind of get over that, I mean, I don't know exactly if they would be fine. But they just need to catch some good yeah. breaks. I mean, if we, even with us, like when we were just losing those round fives, like they just need to clutch up some apps and they, they can be champs easily. Okay, well, one, one thing I want to ask, kind of a, an additional question on top of that question. Uh, all right, so let's say they didn't make a change yet, but let's yeah. say of the teams that did make a change. Like, is there someone that you think that made a change might come out at this point that have to make another change after Seattle? Is there anyone there that you think might? We'll see, like, I don't, two changes back to I back. I think that's going to be hard to predict, but yeah, no, it, 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 all really, it really depends on the placements. It's, and how, it's all results, yeah, right? Yeah, it really depends on the placements. And then potentially we'll see another roster mania right before Season 2. I feel like yeah. if anything, it would probably be TK just because they won back-to-back -back events at the beginning of the year. So they kind of have, like, higher expectations going into this. So I feel like if they don't get, like, a top six and higher, they might do another change. Well, that's what yeah. I think they talked about on the, the podcast, right? It's like TK ha must have higher expectations than, let's say, Envy. Like, Envy just yeah. came together. Oh, yeah. they, they don't maybe expect to finish top three, but if you're TK, you probably do still expect well, to they, finish top they, three. They just got fourth. They shot fourth, too. <laughs> they so just got like, fourth, so if, they, if they playoffs. make a change and they don't get fourth or higher, which is not easy to do, like, I mean, they're going to probably think more? about it. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Well, guys, that's going to that's gonna do it. But thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate thank you, you coming us. out and having the entire roster. Uh, it's, it's part of the job. You know, you win. I harass you more. But no, seriously, <laughs> I, I appreciate it, guys. It's been fun. It's been awesome to hear about the victory he had, and obviously, uh, Roster Mania and leading now into Seattle. But, guys, that's going to do it for the show. Matches begin at 2 p.m. Pacific time. This is going to be amazing. Teams from all over the world coming to battle out for $200,000 here in Seattle. Let's get into the matches.